Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. So in this video, I wanted to talk about cloud migration strategy, but unlike my other videos, we're going to go through an example of a fictitious company going through this cloud migration process and seeing what actions are taken, what considerations are made for the migration process. So let's go. So let me introduce you to Vance Refrigeration. It's a big company out of Scranton, Pennsylvania, picked completely randomly. Fence Refrigeration makes refrigeration equipment. So Vance Refrigeration has a mix of applications in their environment. They have third-party system like an inventory management system. They have tools that they've grown in-house that um, they, they developed the applications. Uh, they have databases and you know every group is more or less different and all these services are owned and managed by different groups uh, there's the it service that owns the underlying infrastructure they manage the virtual machines they manage the servers and all that stuff there's the bi team that manages the databases there's the application support team there's the development team that writes its own tools and so there's a mixed bag of everything in their environment. Now, this company is currently leasing a data, data center, but the lease is up for renewal in about a year. So they are considering migrating their infrastructure to the cloud for a few reasons, including that they're opening a new location somewhere in Florida or whatever, and that having a local data center may not be the right solution for them. So they want to investigate cloud and how they can move as much as possible to the cloud. So let's go through each type of application one by one and try to figure out why we would want or not want to migrate them to the cloud. What are the considerations and you know, what can be done? So the first type is the applications that are running on the server that are critical. So the inventory system is an application that runs locally. Uh, it requires the database. It's on 24 seven. It's running on windows server. And so to move that to the cloud, what the company is looking into is, well, does this vendor provide a cloud offering or software as a service offering because then there's no need to really do any migration the idea is to do as little work as possible and maybe upgrade to the latest and greatest uh, unfortunately this particular vendor does not offer a cloud offering so what the team decides to do is what's called a lift and shift so what they're going to do is they're going to take a snapshot of that virtual machine they're going to restore it on a virtual machine in the cloud, Azure, GCP, whatever. It's irrelevant in this conversation. They're going to restore it and they're going to turn it back on. When they turn it back on, they're going to shut down or redirect the traffic to the other, to the new one. And they're going to do a migration of the different data that was accumulated during the migration. So now they have this uh, service one-to-one -one copied in the cloud with all the data, and now it's available for them. The downside of this, and it's unfortunate, is that the compute in the cloud is far more expensive. And so they have to have that virtual machine on 24 seven. So that's not great, but you know, it's a critical system. So they're willing to sacrifice the cost for this system. And maybe down the line, they will evaluate a different solution, but for now that's their new solution for the migrating this application. The second type of application we have is random tools. So what Vance Refrigeration did is they decided, well, we're going to go and every tool is going to have its own virtual machine. 
so that we don't really separate. We know exactly what each machine does. And if one goes down, we only know, we know what is impacted. But now the lift and shift that we did previously is not a great idea for this. Uh, they realized that some of these machines are just running one or two scripts and just a couple hours a day. So they decided that maybe their approach of having one virtual machine per tool is not the correct one. Now these tools can't really be adapted to the cloud. So what they're going to do is they decided, well, we're going to do similar to the lift and shift approach, but what we're going to do first is we're going to consolidate all these services, see how many we can fit onto one machine without really impacting anything. So they're taking a lot of their tools, bundling them into one virtual machine, and then doing a lift and shift to the cloud. Now that allows them to save money in the cloud once they have this virtual machine. So it's a great thing because now they're there. It's still expensive in the cloud, but they consolidated all their applications into fewer machines, which makes the cost worthwhile, right? Because the other options would have been to have many virtual machines, uh, which is the same cost as one big machine, but they had to handle things like shutting down the compute when it's not needed and turning it on when it's needed. And that was too complicated of a strategy. So they decided to just bundle things and move it to the cloud. Another system is their point of sale system. Now they're using an old system and they decided that maybe now is a good time to investigate having a new offering. So they look and they find a service like Square that offers point of sales and sales management, and you don't have to do anything. Uh, it's a software as a service offering, so they don't have to deploy any infrastructure. So what they decided to do is that once their infrastructure is up for renewal or whatever, or the lease is over, what they're going to do is just shut it down. They're going to let this one retire. In the meantime, for that one year, they're going to try and run both of them simultaneously just so that they can do a migration. So they're going to use Square, and I'm just picking Square because that's the one I know. They're going to use Square for uh, the year and their old system for that same period of time. And they're just going to retire the old one when uh, they're done with it, when the retire the lease is done. So that method is retiring. It's good because now they have a newer solution. It's probably pricier, but uh, they don't have to manage it. They don't have to handle all the updates and all that stuff. It just works, uh, which makes it a lot easier for them. So it's one system that's basically offloaded from their IT organization. So that's uh, repurchasing and retiring type of strategies. Now we have our internal applications. Now these were developed to be run on servers and the vendor obviously doesn't offer a cloud offering because they're the vendor, they're, it's their own application. So what they decided to do is that they're going to refactor their code so that it works natively in cloud. So they want to take advantage of cloud technologies like Kubernetes or uh, uh, serverless computing and all that. So they decided that they're going to pr prioritize certain features to refactor into a cloud native solution for that next year and hopefully migrate the bulk of their application to the cloud. That takes a lot of effort. It's a huge demand to both refactor the whole code and uh, accommodate new features that are requested by internal users. So um, they're going to take their, their time doing it. <clears throat> so their, their plan is to refactor pieces of the application, move those to the cloud, and then move the rest of the application, lift and shift to the cloud until they can fully retire the whole legacy code and be cloud native 
for the rest of their application. So it's it's very expensive in man hours. It takes a long time, but in the end, they will have a cloud native application that they can scale and it should hopefully save them a lot of money from the classical VM 24 seven uh, approach with a more scalable application that adjusts to the demand that as they grow and as the demand grows. And so these are just a few strategies that they could have taken advantage of to migrate things to the cloud. Uh, obviously there's probably more and different and combinations of all of them. Like we've seen in the last example, where part of it was refactoring, part of it was lift and shift. There's not one size fits all. As you can see, different applications, different uh, tools have different needs for their migration to the cloud. So you will never see a company that goes straight up lift and shift um, unless they have a lot of money and they're willing to just take their infrastructure, move it to the cloud and call it a day, uh, which is unlikely. So different applications, different needs, different strategies. So I encourage you to think about these strategies. I encourage you to make up your own fictitious company and go through these examples on your own and try to, to see what the use cases are. If you are already working in IT, feel free to think about how you would migrate certain applications to the cloud that you currently have on premise and doing that mental gymnastics on a regular basis really helps you understand uh, the cloud better. Uh, also, when you see new services in the cloud, maybe think about, okay, well, Microsoft just announced Fabric. How does Fabric fit into our environment? Could we use it? Could it replace things? So try to think about cloud migrations on a regular basis because it is a big topic for anyone who is in cloud computing. Um, as much as we all want to just work straight up cloud native, some of our work involve migration work. Think about it. And if you don't mind, you can subscribe if you like this video and you want to see more, or you can see this playlist that has more videos like this one. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.